Hi everybody, I'm Andrew Roberts from Great Property Meet and I would like to thank everybody at Property 118 and out there on social media for the help that you have given to Tony Dand. Now, I put out an appeal to help Tony with regards to a rebanding of his HMO rooms to single council tax bands. I've known Tony about eight, ten years. He's got a, a reasonably significant HMO portfolio and I actually saw this property back in 2016. Do you want to give a bit of background to this property? Because it's a cracking little property. It is. It's a property in Rugby. Um, I purchased it in the middle of 2016. It was already a HMO and it had an office downstairs, which used to be an old shop. And I've converted the shop into two more rooms and put a kitchen in as well. So in all, there's nine rooms in this HMO. So it's a so generous HMO yes. that we're looking at yes. here. And it was already trading as a HMO. It was. Um, it'd been trading for a couple of years as a HMO. The previous owner had put in single electric meters in each room and each room had its own separate heating and it had kitchens in each room. Um, so they were quite self-contained rooms then, they based were, on that. They, they were when I, when I purchased it. However, it was a health... Um, fire risk, um, all the rooms had their own separate heating and yep. so I took all the old heating out, I put central heating in the property, I upgraded them, new fire doors, um, so it was fully compliant with HMO regulations. So effectively you gave shared facilities rather than self-contained facilities, so yes. you're going actually the opposite way to what a lot of other HMO landlords are doing. Yes, I, I put in separate kitchens, um, there was central heating for every room in the property, so I improved the um, facilities in the in the property for everyone. Fantastic. Well, you ended up uh, with the VOA contacting you and rebanding or reassessing your property. Now you've got a document in your hand. It, it's it's a little document here, which was the valuation tribunal hearing that you attended last week. How many pages are in that document? There is over 100. I think it's 104, 105 um, pages in the document. And I, I've had a scan read through some of the, the critical areas of that document. And the Valuation Office were attempting to rely upon six cases that they have taken before on rebanding and use that as the means to assess your property. Now, do you want to outline some of the facts of, of the case for everybody out there so that they can yeah. understand uh, about your property and about why it was rebanded? And obviously, there was a little bit of email communication between the VOA and yourself as well. There was. Um, in case law, there's four things which a room has to have to become a dwelling, which has to, we could be single banded. And so that's, just, that's going back to the 1967 General Rates Act. Yeah, let me so just... So it's quite an old piece of legislation. There are. There are four ingredients to, to test whether a room should be single-banded. First, it should be actually occupied. Second, it must be exclusively for a particular purpose. Thirdly, the possessions of some value to the person. And fourthly, the possession must not be of too transient a period. So... If you think about it, every room in every HMO fits that criteria. It's exclusive mm. and they have the use of that room. It's some benefit. Yeah. So using their definition, every single room in every HMO in this country should be single banded. So that's actually quite worrying. It's very worrying. That really is quite worrying. So let, let, let's roll forwards a little bit here. You had quite a bit of dialogue backwards and forwards with the valuation office about this when they rebanded you. Now, let me, let me just ask the first question. You were single banded before, and what was the rateable value on the single band? It was a band C, so it was just over £1,560 for the whole property. And when they rebanded, what band did they put you in, and what was the cost? of that as well when they rebranded each room um the the actual rates payable went up over twelve and a half thousand for the whole property so they probably picked you on a nine times band a nine times band a right, band a. right. Yes, yeah correct. okay so that is quite a significant jump 
in bills and quite a big impact on your profitability and also uh, effectively a poll tax on the tenants within each of them rooms. It is, yes. Okay, so you had a little bit of dialogue backwards and forwards with the VOA and they pulled out a couple of facts, didn't they, uh, for you. So do you, do you want to run everybody through that as to yeah. what was going on there? Yeah, so when I, I, I spoke to the officer who came to visit me and I said, I'm very disappointed you put it single band in. Absolutely. Is there anything I can do to return it back to what it was? And he's very kind, explained to me about the four different criteria. However, the VOA have their own ability to rebrand or reband properties um, with discretion. And okay. I said, well, how, what can I do to this property to get it, in your eyes, re rebanded into less than nine? And the gentleman sent me an email outlining what I had to do. And the main thing he was complaining about was some of the kitchens had water supply. And he said, look, you've got separate kitchens. If you re re replace the kitchens with dry kitchens, i.e. take out the sinks, take out the water supply, we will come back and reband your property less than nine. OK, so th that, that's quite important. You can have a dry kitchen. Yeah but you need to remove any water supply from the room. Yes. And they would have discretion to reband that. Yes. Which is quite an important point. There was a second point, wasn't there, that they also made to you about, um, in the email that we were going through earlier. And that second point, if, if I can just uh, refer yeah. to your email, what they were saying is, in a HMO, in the majority of cases, each bedsit unit being in separate occupation constitutes a dwelling. So that's the starting point for each band. Yeah. Rooms do not have to be altered, even have a separate lock on it for the basic principle to apply. Yeah. Now we'll come on at the end of this video to a couple of points that were not actually tested in court because this case was won by Tony and thrown out on the first point of appeal. But we'll cover the extra points at the end. So effectively what they're saying is they you remove those and they would consider rebanding. Now there were some other important things that have come out along the way in, in this particular case in that um, there is a document that they referred to uh, in their email and what I shall do is post a web link to this document here, which is the banding of houses in multiple occupation HMOs, and it specifically refers to section six. Now, section six is HMOs with adaptions to each floor, where each floor of a house let in parts has standard facilities and can be treated as a self-contained unit, then each floor is able to be given a single band. This applies where the occupiers of the floor share a kitchen and a bathroom. Now, in your case, describe to me, did they have a shared kitchen and did they have a shared bathroom? Yeah, each floor on this property had its own kitchen, it has its own shower room, it has its own bathroom. So my argument was, and listening to the, the case they sent to me, this should be rebanded under two bands rather than nine. And this is the advice they gave me. So you've complied with all of their requests to remove pipe work yep. to supply water into each room. You've followed it, each detailed piece of advice they've asked. And then you resubmitted, did you, for yep. a rebanding? Yeah, I, I appealed it. I sent photographs of each kitchen, um, each room with no water supply in. They had pictures, obviously, from previous where there was water. Yeah. And I resubmitted um, an appeal to them. However, my appeal was dismissed. Um, they never even came to visit the property. Ooh. So they dismissed it without even looking. Correct. Now, in that 104-page document that you have shared with me in detail, there are photographs of the before and photographs of the after. Correct. Now... Give me an outline as to, to what the case was and how the Valuation Tribunal viewed all of this. 
Well, the tribunal was not, was not very impressed with the VOA. Um, okay. Clearly, I, I showed them the email and the advice given to me, and clearly I'd followed the advice. Clearly, with the photos I'd submitted, okay. that I've, I've removed the water supply, there's no sinks. And they asked the VOA, why haven't you been back to view it? This is your advice. And the VOA had no answer to it. Now, that's interesting. So you also asked a number of other questions of the VOA in the hearing. And this is, is something I found really interesting. I, I would strongly recommend if you are in this situation, you follow what Tony has done here as well. We spoke about some questions you asked the VOA of how many licensed HMOs there were in the town. Yeah, Rug Rugby, the town itself, I looked onto the council webpage and it had 157 licensed HMOs. On that information also, it tells me how many rooms are self-contained and how many rooms aren't. Okay. And over the whole of the town, which is over a thousand rooms, there was less than 20 which were classified as self-contained. Okay. Now, the VOA look in an area and compare like we like. So my query was, if there's over 980 rooms which haven't got banned in, why is mine one of the 20 which have? And they had no reply. They had no reply. I mean, it was interesting from uh, our conversation earlier. You asked them the, the very direct question, how many HMOs are there in rugby? And what was their response? They didn't know. And you asked... How many of them had been rebanded, and what was the response? They didn't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's fairly fundamental to a case. Yeah, know the area. Yeah. So if you go in a bit more prepared than they are, the land uh, tribunal are going to look more favourably on you than the expert who is telling them they don't know. So that's really great. Now there were some interesting points. Going back to the 1967 Act, there was four tests of what classes are dwelling. Yes. Now, at this point, what did the tribunal say to you about this hearing? Did they uh, proceed with it or did they make a judgment at this point? They made a judgment at this point. Obviously... I had direction from VOA to remove the water supply. I had done that, I had complied with it. They hadn't visited the property and they had no argument of why they hadn't been. So the, the person in charge said, well, you can't continue with this. You need to go back to the property, yeah. re-examine it and come back with low abandoned, like you've suggested to me. Yeah, because they put in writing, you yeah. do this and we will reduce the banding. Yeah. And here... A web link will appear in the video and you'll be able to find that. Section 6 here clearly states what a dwelling is and clearly states what they can assess you on. And basically, yeah. at worst in your property, because you've got various uh, layouts, you would have three band A's on your property at worst. At worst, yeah. At best, one band C for the whole property. For the whole property or possibly two band A's, B's. Yep. So we're not quite sure of the final outcome because the VOA have got to revisit, but we'll update you once we know. Now, moving this forward, going back to the four points that they made, you didn't get the chance to test this argument. So this is for somebody else out there, another landlord who's in this situation to test these additional arguments going back to the 1967 uh, rates act so what what were the extra points that you were going to raise tony one of the points is being transient to period now there's nothing in law which states what a transient period is a lot of the rooms i rent out i rent out on a, on a license agreement which is like a two-week rolling agreement i have a lot of contractors who come to me who don't want to be tied for a long period yeah. but they don't want to rent a hotel room so I give them an option of a license agreement where they give me two weeks notice they want to leave. Um, it just keep rolling until they let me know. Um, the actual ruling doesn't actually state what a, a period is. Okay. In the case law I've seen, it's all been six months AASTs. So one of the queries I was asking is what constitutes 
an actual period which isn't too transcendent. And, and within uh, one of the things you had was evidence to present yeah. to, the, to the tribunal that you'd had eight, uh, or typically your average was eight customers in a room over a 12 month window. Yeah. Over in this property itself, had 38 different tenants over that 12 months. Some rooms had eight tenants, some had one or two who'd been there for longer. But this was one of my queries is what constitutes a, you know, a permanent position, a, a not too transient period. So this is something which I think can be argued yeah. um, what too transient a period is. So if you're doing service accommodation and using a room as service accommodation, that definitely isn't going to be a permanent position. So it's something you could argue. Yeah, most definitely. Um, th there were some more points that you were also uh, potentially looking to test uh, here, but unfortunately the, the case was quashed and yeah. found in your favour before we get there. So what were those points? Another point I was going to bring up was, or some, an argument people can use, is it talks about the, the property or the room has to be exclusive. One option could be rather than have five ASTs for the property is have the property under one AST with five tenants. Yeah. You then issue each tenant with um, the keys for the whole lot. It's up to them, like a student let, who room rents in what room. Mm -hmm. That way they haven't got exclusivity per room actually written down. They've got the whole use of the house between them. It's like a student let. Um, I then, do exactly that yeah. with my student yeah. lets. Unfortunately, student lets are council tax exempt. Yeah. But it could be used in the exact same way here. Yeah, I, I think that argument can be used. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody leaves and you get a new tenant, then obviously you have to issue a re new AST for, yeah. the, for the five, six, however more people you've got in there. Mm -hmm. But you don't have that exclusivity per room. And that way, I think you can get out of paying a single rank banding per room in a property with five rooms yeah. because they're all under the same ASD. Absolutely. And, and something else which I uh, have seen another landlord do, but this has, again, not been tested in court. They were individual self-contained units, but the customers were not, or tenants, were not actually allocated a specific room. They were given the keys to a specific room, but there was a clause in the AST which actually said, upon X notice, which was 24 hours, we reserve the right to move you from this room to another room within the building. Therefore, they're not allocated a dedicated room of permanence. It's another argument somebody can use going forward. Absolutely, absolutely. So, are, are there any pearls of wisdom you'd like to share with everybody today? It's don't be frightened to argue against the VAOA. Yeah. Um, you can win cases. Every case will be different. So obviously it'll be, ex you know, particularly to yourself and your own house. But don't be frightened to go to the um, tribunal. Don't be frightened to argue about it. If you do get a case like I did, where your house suddenly becomes single banded, write to them and ask them how you can change it. Because they may give you advice like they did me. And if you go to the tribunal, you, you comply with that advice. They haven't really got any arguments to keep it single banded. I think that's brilliant advice. I mean, always challenge something. I mean, I, I put it back to you're trying to negotiate with the VOA. You're asking them, what can I do to reduce my bill? And to go from about £1,600 to £12,500, that's a huge chunk out of your profit it is. or your bottom line. And it could, with Section 24 tax and other things, tip you into a loss-making situation. And also if your lender is looking at your profit and loss and you come to refinance and they see that the rates being charged is per dwelling or per room in, in VOA terms, that is going to affect your remortgageability on the property as well. So it has multiple impacts on your business that I'd recommend you challenge. And I think Tony has done a sterling job. And I thank everybody in the community for connecting Tony with experts and giving Tony advice on this journey uh, through this challenge, which has resulted in 
creating a piece of case law that landlords can now rely upon to actually counter any case law put forward by the VOA. And that's a really important fact. Yeah, I agree. So I uh, thank you very much, Tony. Thank you. You've been a brilliant member of our community for the last four years. I look forward to remaining a good friend of yours and for us to continue to know each other. Yeah. And all that remains to be said is if you've got any questions, if you drop them in the questions box below, we will answer those on this YouTube channel. Or if it's being circulated somewhere else, tag us in and we will endeavour to answer those questions on whatever forum this is appearing on. Uh, but thank you very much for now and we'll keep you updated with any further progress as it happens.